What's happening, gang? Good Tuesday morning to you. It's April 12th, and I wanted to uh, do a, a video here about what I think is a looming banking crisis. Now, I've done several videos on the economy and banking and all this other stuff uh, over the past year, and you can go look in my playlist. This is, um, I think it's financial or economic, whatever. You'll see it in there. I forget what it's called. But, um, oh, by the way, I took the film off the front of my iPhone. You can see that it's much clearer now. You're probably wishing at this point, ah, put the film back on. Anyway, so the Federal Reserve is having several closed meetings. They met with President Obama yesterday, Janet, Janet Yellen did, and they have several other closed door meetings. And, you know, what are they talking about? Well, my best guess is they're talking about the meltdown of the banking system. Now, we saw over in Austria a bail-in is taking place. That's a big deal, folks. Uh oh, squirrel, squirrel, get out of the way. Whew, missed him. Good. Uh, so we've talked about bail-ins. You know, we also talked about bailouts. You know, the last time around, the taxpayer took it on the chin, and Goldman Sachs and all their big banker buddies got a huge cash inf infusion, courtesy of John and Joan Q. Taxpayer. And uh, the powers that be and the governments know that the people. We're not hip to that and don't want to see it happen again, so they're going to try something new called the bail-in. Now, they've made this legal through executive order. So it's all legal beagle, folks. It's all written down in black and white if you care to look at Obama executive orders. And he's not the only one that has done stuff like this. Every president has put their little dictator, tyrannical power stamp on their executive orders, which are unconstitutional and therefore null and void, but they don't care about that. So here's a couple things you need to be concerned about. I'm not saying this is the big one. It could be, it could not be, I don't know. Heck, it might not be anything, but I'm sure not gonna sit back and wait and find out. I've told you to get your money out of the banks. Now, yeah, we all have to have a bank account. We wanna do commerce and business in today's system, but you don't have to leave excess cash in there. Now, some of you might be thinking, gosh, I wish I had excess cash to worry about. Yeah, that's true. Much of America and much of the world doesn't have any money. And that is part of the problem and why this whole thing is breaking down. See, the system survives off of credit expansion. And I think that we are past that breaking point. We just can't afford any more debt, personally, or, uh, um, you know, the governments can't afford any more debt. I mean, crying out loud, we're, we're near tr $20 trillion, and that's just what's... Uh, uh, talked about. You know, we're not talking about unfunded liabilities or the derivatives that are out there. Now we're talking hundreds of trillions of dollars. So it's past the point of being able to, we're never going to pay this off. We're never even going to pay it down. Hell, we get deeper in debt every day, folks. So there's no political fix to this. So you and I need to worry about what we're going to do to try to avoid economic ruin. If there's even such a thing at this point, I don't know that we can even avoid it regardless of what we do. But just in case you want to play along, home gamers, get your money out of the bank. Like now, if nothing happens in a week or a month or a year from now, you decide you want to deposit it again, you can do that. They'll take it. Get your money out of the bank. If you have a lot of money and you're not buying precious metals, I don't know what you're waiting for. Now, yep, your food, your water, your ammunition, your firearms, your shelter, all that stuff should be taken care of first. But you should be buying some silver. If you got a lot of money, buy some gold. Buy both if you can. Buy some precious metals. But check out Austria, check out what's going on over there. That will be coming to the United States sooner or later. Maybe sooner, maybe later, I don't know. But um, in the past, we've seen the Federal Reserve do, the, do these closed door secret meetings, and it's usually followed up with a press release that says, oh, by the way, uh, we just infused XYZ with, you know, $50 million or $2 billion to bail them out, and keep them solvent. That may be what, what we're getting ready to hear. But keep in mind, this is a systemic failure. This isn't going to stop at one institution. This isn't going to stop at one country. This is going to happen. It has to happen globally. So if you stick all your money in the bank and you wake up tomorrow or next week or next month and the bank's closed and you have no cash on hand and you don't have your pantry full and you don't have your preps in order, your SOL, you know what that means? You're shit out of luck. You know, might all be for naught. Maybe we're just 
raising the flag earlier. Maybe we're raising the flag and we don't need to. That's okay. You can put your money back. Understand something though. If this is the big one, if this is the real deal, you're gonna you're gonna wish that you took your money out. You're gonna wish that you bought some precious metal. You're gonna wish that you had food and water and ammunition stored and a plan in place. Maybe a bug out location. You're gonna wish that you did all that. There's not gonna be any turning back. There's not gonna be any second guessing. It's not gonna be any, oh my gosh, now I can do this. It's too late, y'all. I know I'm singing in the choir to most of you people. I'll tell you about an interesting conversation I had. This person is hardcore liberal, hardcore left wing. And uh, to my surprise, Mr. X didn't only listen to me, but agreed with a lot of what I had to say. And although this person didn't jump down the rabbit hole, you know, full-fledged they decided to take some of my advice and put a week's worth of food in the pantry although I said they needed much more than that they decided well it was rational and prudent you know to get a week's worth of food some water water filter um, wouldn't buy a gun because apparently owning a gun is against their principles but decided that you know having pepper spray would probably be a good thing okay you know some means to protect yourself I guess and also this person said, well, listen, if something really bad happened, uh, I'm going to just come down to your place. And I said, eh, love you, love you, mean it, but that ain't happening. But I'm telling you right now that if you don't heed my warning, you don't show up with at least uh, a firearm and enough ammunition and the means and knowledge to know how to use it and defend yourself and defend my homestead, a year's worth of food, um, toiletries and personal effects so I don't have to feed you and clothe you out of my pocket I might have to strongly consider you turn uh, strongly consider turning you away well now this person is close enough to me to where uh, they were surprised to hear me say that tough conversation to have but that's the way it's got to be I mean listen y'all you're not worth anything to me if I got to feed you clothe you and protect you and you're not bringing anything to the table and I mean anything. And if you don't have a, a, a gun and the knowledge and ammunition to know how to protect yourself or protect my homestead, you're, you're honestly a huge detractor at that point. No special skills to speak of. Sorry. I mean, love you, love you, mean it. So I was happy to hear that I got through to somebody I didn't think I'd ever have a chance of getting through to. Even the uh, people that you wouldn't expect to be feeling this feeling that you and I are feeling, or many of us out there are feeling. They're feeling it. Now, I will tell you that this person also said that they think Obama's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> so they're still obviously in denial. I guess maybe they're gonna ride their unicorn into uh, work. Oh no, wait, this person doesn't have a job. They're unemployed. Master's degree, mind you, and unemployed. Be that as it may, I digress. The shit is officially starting to hit the fan. And I think, I think we're starting to see it in mainstream America. And I don't think you're gonna be able to deny it much longer. I think the whole uh, presidential peddling fiction is gonna be laughed at by everybody, including people on uh, MSNBC soon. That's my thoughts. Heck, this could go on another month or another year, maybe another two or three years. I doubt it, but maybe. But if you haven't started yet, you're way behind the curve and you better get your shit in order right now. But the SHTF is happening, I think, right now. It's been happening. It's been a slow grind. But you're not going to be able to ignore it much longer. It's going to be all over the mainstream. It's, you know, when, when people start losing their jobs in mass layoffs and can't pay their mortgage again, you're not going to be able to talk about it or uh, economic recovery. When the banks start to close or do balance, sorry, you're not going to be able to talk about an economic recovery. In my opinion, the people that are talking about an, ec an economic recovery are the ones peddling fiction. The reality is our system is, is on fire. It's put together with tape, glue, band-aids, and whatever else they can find together to spin it together to keep it together just long enough to, you know, bilk another hundred billion dollars out of we the people man if you own stock strongly consider whether or not you should hold on to them we're at all-time or near all-time highs again for no good reason the news is horrible I, and I mean horrible and if you lived in Venezuela you've seen a 700% inflation expected to go to a thousand percent inflation you wish you own metal I think we're gonna see that globally including here in the US think about it Maybe I'm way off base. 
So Christine Lagarde with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF Bank, uh, just lowered global GDP outlook forecast from, I think, 3.4 to 3.2. Basically downgraded the whole world, except for China. Said China's going to have harder economic times, but then increased their global GDP or their, their GDP forecast for China. I, none of this makes any sense to anybody with half a brain. Um, and I believe it was the Atlanta Federal Reserve just downgraded their first quarter estimates in the U.S. from 0.7 to 0.1. Well, that's right. That's it. That's a big percentage decrease. And mind you, that was down from a 2.7% um, forecast. I don't know if it was late last year or early in the first quarter for the first quarter numbers. So basically, I think the best number they can come up with is 0.1. And I wholeheartedly believe that we're going to see that go to a real negative number when all the data is in for the first quarter. And I'd like to attribute that to the fact that I was on my no buy February. Made a difference. To sum it all up, the uh, global economy is in trouble. The U.S. economy is in trouble. Uh, all the problems that we saw from 2008 that really created the economic calamity that we were in have not gone away. They've only gotten bigger. The policies, both by the Federal Reserve Bank and all the other central banks around the world, as well as all the other governments around the world, um, almost without fail, have made things worse, not better. The debt is unsustainable for both individuals and governments and corporations. What's keeping the stock market up? Well, you can argue that a lot of it has to do with uh, what some people refer to as the plunge protection team, meaning it's, a, it's an actual entity of uh, the government and central banks that are out there buying shares and manip manipulating prices, uh, selling short metals contracts to manipulate prices, and or uh, the fact that you know central banks are buying up shares to try to prop up their stock markets. Um, and also corporations borrowing money or using cash to go in and do share buybacks. All of which is not sustainable long term and most of which is indicative to a market top just before we see either a correction, a recession, or an outright depression. So pick your poison guys. Uh, none of it sounds great and it's all just poison. I say uh, run for Z Hills the best that you can. Prepare the best that you can and hopefully ride out the storm. My expectation is that at some point, things get back to normal or normalize somewhat, and there might be some real opportunities to invest capital in companies that produce or provide a service or a product that you and I use, consume, and they can sell it at a profit. And, uh, and, and that's the basis for, for good value long-term and good investing long-term. We'll see. Oh yeah, and I've had lots of you guys ask me about uh, why I didn't put up a video this past weekend. I usually do uh, go down and spend the night. Well, I did spend Friday night at my uh, property um, and most of Saturday, and I just, I needed a break. So I came home Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, late, late afternoon, spent Saturday night at home, went back Sunday morning and got lots more work done. I took some video, but not a lot. I was more focused on work than video. And I didn't put that video up. And here's the reason why. I don't want to show you what it looks like at this, at this point. I want to wait until I get some finished product in there and then I'll show you the whole thing then.